This is the O2 workstation from Silicon Graphics. It redefines the workstation by combining performance you expect from Silicon Graphics with the power of the web. This desktop system has tremendous compute and interactive 3D graphics power, plus a whole new set of features that you'd never expect in a computer at this price. Silicon Graphics has made this blend of traditional workstation performance and next generation capabilities possible through an innovative new architecture. What's most exciting is you can afford to put this power on the desk of every engineer and creative professional in your company. The O2 radically changes the workstation landscape. It brings consumer technologies together with high-end 3D technologies, with integrated imaging and multimedia, infuses the web throughout that, and it basically builds the best integrated workstation that has ever been built. This new hardware workstation technology has taken everything from the high end, brought it down to the desktop for the first time. The O2 workstation is based on the industry's first high-performance unified memory architecture. All data, whether graphics, video, audio, or compute, goes directly into memory, which is the heart of this machine. No longer is your data being moved around between a series of individual computer boards. This elegant architecture enables the O2 workstation to spend more time actually working on data than on moving it. O2 is a revolutionary new architecture for workstations. Things haven't changed in the last three years in the workstation industry. With O2, we've taken the key bottleneck at workstations, which has been bandwidth, and we've absolutely eliminated it. The key in system design is knowing what to leave out. And with the unified memory architecture, we have been able to leave out a lot of components that others have to add to their machines for these kinds of capabilities. The architecture really allows us now to provide a set of integrated tools to the masses of users out there. Silicon Graphics has always been known for building the most powerful workstations. O2 continues that leadership by bringing the most advanced CPU technology and stunning 3D graphics to every user. In markets like manufacturing, animation, and the sciences, O2's capabilities will redefine what users expect of their desktop. We really are finding a high level of performance at a, at a, at a very good price, so that the value to the customer is, is phenomenal. Whenever you can interactively adjust something, you know, like texture mapping with hardware texture mapping, it, uh, it kind of keeps the workflow going. You know, it's a, you get in a rhythm and, it, and you can kind of get in rhythm and kind of really produce a lot of work in a shorter period of time. Visual is everything in this business. When you look at something and, and, and feel that after you finish the model and shaded it that you want to reach in and, and pull it out of the screen, that, that means that, that people are going to be able to review that product and, and, and know exactly what, what you're trying to tell them and show them. That's important. The world is changing, and so is the nature of data. O2 works with all the media types that professional applications require. CAD designers can now create a video of a texture mapped assembly and send it to a PC user on the manufacturing floor via their intranet. In industries ranging from entertainment to medicine, O2's combination of 3D, video, and image processing significantly advances the way users can look at the world. This machine will give a lot of quick working due to everything it has built in. It has built in compression, it has built in video, it has built in graphics accelerating, acceleration, it has a built in high speed CPU, so it has built in ultra SCSI, very fast networking, so exactly the components we want, exactly the components we need in one box. We allow the users now to capture uh, actually the animation of their designs. Uh, not only to capture that on the screen, but also to output that in a standard video format so they can communicate that with external locations, customers, suppliers. In the past it has taken one to two hours to work up a case in a 3D environment. Our product based on the new SGI technology, we expect to be able to deliver a case to a radiologist start to finish in five minutes. One of the most fundamental changes in computing has been the advent of the World Wide Web. It is changing the way we access information and having a profound effect on how teams of people work together. O2's integrated web user environment brings drag and drop to the realm of professional communication. Together with O2's ability to handle everything from 3D to video to HTML, 
It puts a powerful set of communications tools at the user's fingertips. With O2, what we've done is we've taken some very important communications technologies, which are all based upon the web, and we've infused them into the machine in such a way that many O2s can link together. You can tie your organization together in an intranet right out of the box. It's actually much easier to move electrons than people. So uh, we have to, there's, there's the web again. If you're going to collaborate over the wire, then that would be a very valuable tool. Uh, there again, if you're going to do that kind of thing, you need to manage data better. There's the web again. The O2 is the ideal workstation for CAD, post-production, website creation, and scientific visualization. It is designed for professionals on the critical path, the creative and engineering teams that lead their company's competitive drive. Now companies will be able to afford to equip many of their engineers with the power that they've come to expect from an SGI machine. Now we can hire so many more artists and, and put them on uh, boxes that sort of doesn't bre don't break the bank, where the investment is a reasonable investment. Whenever you can bring real-time feedback and real-time imagery back, you're going to positively impact your bottom line and the time your production takes. And as everyone knows, in this business, time is money. Um, it's a real cliche, but it's really true. As we increase functionality built into hardware and as we increase performance, our users experience a real benefit, bottom line. You get this box, you put it on the desk, you start working. You know, you've got an ISDN line into your house, and you're, you can do shots in your garage for any major motion picture. These boxes aren't limited. Just because they're on the desktop doesn't mean you can't do high-end work. The opposite is true. Harnessing the power of the web, giving people capabilities they never had, translating those capabilities into results. That's what O2 is all about. It has the power to let you see what's possible. It's a cool multimedia 3D interactive experience. I think I've had one full night of sleep in the last week and a half. It's not your mom and dad's formal. Since you know, our heritage is 3D and we started really driving 3D out into the web and the internet, we started taking that technology and say, why don't we make that as an interface to the whole experience? This project really had to show off the machine, the new next generation workstation that's coming out and all the great capabilities that are being built into it. Uh, 3D graphics, texture mapping, the ability to play back, compress video very efficiently, very quickly. The out-of-box experience takes the concepts of 3D navigation on the World Wide Web and really puts it in a context of my new machine, what I can do with it. The goal is to not only ship it on the machine itself, but obviously put it on the internet so people can explore the machine in 3D, and that's what's really new. And one, one final uh, important goal for Out of Box Experience was to really uh, show people our vision of what the web's gonna look like in a, in a couple of years. The great thing that we've got in using VRML 2.0 Moving World is not only is it a 3D environment, but it's a 3D environment with multimedia and behavior. So we've got things that are alive and things that you can touch and, and play with and things that wiggle and things that make noises and go bump in the night. So now we have the ability for someone to go into an area, um, let's say manufacturing, go into that world and look at it and walk around at sort of a, a virtual show floor where they can find out how other users have used the technology and then actually go all the way to the extent of finding a, the applications that might help them. Just how the, the tool was built 
is a great example of what the, this product ultimately is going to deliver to the marketplace. It was really a high-risk project because of the technology we're putting into use and the scale of the project and uh, the interesting mix of people that we had to get uh, involved to do this project. I'm responsible for most of the 3D in terms of animation, behavior, uh, and, and the look and feel. So it's a collaborative process. This is a project that spans a lot of companies working with us, a lot of people spending a lot of late nights you know, here at SGI trying to create a new world, uh, one that didn't exist. Construct has just done a tremendous job of taking the tools and the technology and, and really just showing off these cool things. This is a four-dimensional project. It's pretty exciting. We've got the text in the first dimension. We've got you know, bitmap graphics. Um, we're producing 3D spaces, and we're producing animations. We have Gabriella, who takes the initial ideas and packages them in a way that makes them understandable to the client. I'm boobying. Then I go back and do drawings of it, followed by models. Uh, the models go to Stinky, who colors them and texture maps them and starts to put the first hints on the behaviors. Then it goes to the alchemist, and that's Squishy. And Squishy starts to really play with the files and make sure that they're Vermal 2.0 compliant and that they do a lot of the more advanced behaviors that we want. We're constantly reaching uh, just a little higher than is technically possible. So every week we're trying to do something that we really won't be able to look at till next week. Ah. This is the entry space for the out-of-box experience right now. The result of this collaboration is something that really does show VRML at the next level. You know, suddenly PC users are going to start seeing this new world. And it's not a game anymore. It's not just a game they explore. They're going to realize it just extends out into the, the whole internet world. People, in fact, will, will demand content like this. They'll be bored with the 2D stuff. They'll want to have the next greatest thing. I hope when people see this, they say, wow, I didn't realize that 3D could be so cool and so relevant. In Italy, a clothing maker is growing its business with the World Wide Web, while in Indianapolis, a movie star's racing team is winning auto races. In New York, shoppers find their favorite foods on the shelves, while around the world, travelers buy tickets on the web. And in Japan, kids are playing the latest Nintendo. What do all these people have in common? They're all being touched in almost every facet of their lives by silicon graphics. From chips embedded in everyday consumer products to the highest level of supercomputing, Silicon Graphics is everywhere. If you look at the customers who use our systems, they're the customers that design the products that all of us use on a, on a daily basis. The difference between success and failure in the grocery business is the difference between knowing exactly what your customers want or wondering. Hannaford Brothers, a chain of 40 grocery stores in and around New York, is using silicon graphic systems to keep track of what their customers buy and make sure it's always in stock. A successful auto manufacturer today needs to know how to produce safe, high-quality products inexpensively. Carbon supplies auto bodies and assemblies for car manufacturers worldwide. They use silicon graphic systems early in their design process to simulate crash testing and eliminate costly prototyping. Staying ahead in the intensely competitive airline business means giving customers better service while making operations more efficient. For American Airlines, this means using Silicon Graphics web servers to open their Sabre reservation system to the Internet. Nothing says close competition more than auto racing, where differences of a thousandth of an inch in tolerance can mean the difference between first and last place. 
The Newman Haas racing team is using computational fluid dynamics on silicon graphics machines to win races before they ever hit the track. In today's global marketplace, consumer demands are greater than ever, and companies cannot afford to stand still. Silicon Graphics' driving force is to provide its customers with the competitive advantage they need. You buy a computer system and within months it's out of power. And then you have to buy another computer system and it may not be quite compatible because it may not use the latest open standards. So what we as a company attempted to do after working with our customers was to define a scalable product line. By delivering leading edge technology, Silicon Graphics enables customers to innovate and succeed. For years, Silicon Graphics technology has enabled innovation. Today is no different. The latest result of Silicon Graphics' commitment to innovation is a whole new approach to designing computers. Our computers have been getting faster every year, but while processor speeds have doubled every 18 months, overall performance has not. And when you get up to a certain point, it's not about how fast you can process, but how much you can process. The problem is computers have been built the same way for 30 years. The basic interconnect is a bus. We face a fundamental problem, and that is that the amount of data that people have, keep in their memories, on their disks, is growing consistently at 4x every three years. That's the fundamental law of, of storage these days. The problem is that you must increase your ability to handle that data, and the classic bus-based designs are not keeping up. The bus is like a party line. Imagine if a stock brokerage had to use a party line. Only one transaction could be done at a time. No matter how fast you talk, the volume of business you could do in a day would be minuscule. That's one-at-a-time communication, and that's basically what goes on in bus-based architecture. The CPUs, the memory, the I.O. are all fighting it out on the party line, on the bus. Only one can talk at a time. For a true increase in computing power, you need multiple one-to-one -one communications going on simultaneously. In the brokerage, this means all the brokers could be talking one-to-one -one with their clients at the same time. In the computer, it means CPUs, memory, disks, and networks can all be engaged in simultaneous transfers. The technology to do this has been available for a while, but at a very high cost. Silicon Graphics has found a way to make it affordable. This is a huge leap forward in computing power, and they've applied it across their entire product line, from workstations to supercomputers. How did they do it? Two ways. For their O2 workstation, they found a way to make memory the interconnect. They call this unified memory architecture. This means, for example, that you can record, edit, and play back full-size, full-frame video on a machine that costs less than a video-equipped PC. It also means a workstation that can actually handle even the most demanding multimedia for the World Wide Web. On their higher-level machines, they've created scalable shared memory multiprocessing, S2MP. This uses a modular multi-port interconnect, which is able to transfer tremendous amounts of data. An Origin 200 web server with only one processor costs less and can handle more hits than previously available servers with four processors. In the Origin 2000, you have the ability to move huge amounts of data around. How huge? Think about the typical hard drive. Let's say two gigabytes. How long would it take you to copy that onto another disk? Now imagine taking 500 of those. That is a terabyte, a thousand gigabytes, a million megabytes. With this new technology, you can move that terabyte across the system in under a minute. The Onyx 2, by combining S2MP technology with the Silicon Graphics Geometry Engine, has created the fastest, most powerful visual supercomputer ever built, capable of high-resolution, photorealistic, 60 frame per second, real-time simulations. You know, I think one of the reasons why so many customers like to do business with Silicon Graphics is they get a window into the future. Our business isn't to, to listen to what customers want us to do and then to do those things. Our business is to listen to what customers want to accomplish and then figure out what we can do to help them to accomplish those things. Every now and then, a revolution comes along, bringing a fundamental change to the way computing works. A graphical user interface, reduced instruction set chips, multitasking, virtual memory, the web. This design approach is one of those revolutions. Incorporated into the entire Silicon Graphics product line, it makes manipulation of real-world data no longer an obstacle. It is now a capability at every level from workstation to supercomputer. And no one needs this power more than people using the World Wide Web.
the machines are very easy to manage um, and they're very reliable and these things are all key uh, to someone that has to maintain a website. You're going to get a website that ramps from a million hits in a month to a million hits in a week to a million hits in a day in, inside of one month. They aren't going to have time to spin up a whole new set of servers, a whole new set of connections and everything else. SGI has always been at the leading edge of technology and I think that the Origin 2000 is another example of this. With the power of the web and the performance of this new design approach, what you can accomplish is breathtaking.